Hello, and welcome to the Cryptocurrency News Channel. We are at beautiful Mendota Park on the shores of Lake Mendota, which you can see behind me right now. Now, before we go into today's 2.0 topic, if you want to follow me, get more updates, and get more great crypto content, check out the description and the comments. Join me on Twitter and my other channels to uh, get more crypto stuff and discussions. Now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about Ethereum 2.0, and we're going to use a historical analogy for today's topic. Now, Ethereum 2.0, a lot of people are excited about. We're going to talk about the full timeline today. And we're going to use the Battle of Yorktown, which for those of you who aren't history buffs and who don't know much about American history, is the battle that actually secured American independence. Perhaps not the most important battle of the Revolutionary War, but it is the decisive battle that secured independence and ended the war. So um, let's talk about Ethereum 2.0. Now a lot of you are really excited about July and the beacon phase of Ethereum 2.0. Now. The beacon phase is basically where you can actually start staking your Ethereum coins, so that will boost the price up. Because everyone loves staking, obviously. However, that is not the end all and be all of 2.0, because 2.0 is at least a three step process, probably longer. Um, and if you really want to uh, understand it, check out the lowdown. So basically, right now, what you have is the beacon stage in July. And that's only staking, there's no smart contracts, no development, and nothing else coming into that. Now, that won't actually do much except for people to stake, and if you decide to stake at that stage, you have to keep your coins on there for X amount of time, probably a couple of months at least, before you can actually take them out. At least, that's what I've heard. So, at that stage, it's really not a functional 2.0 mainnet. There won't be any development on it, and that's July 2020. Now, in 2021, there's going to be the sharding phase of it. And sharding, you can get like multiple sharding chains. You can process probably hundreds of transactions, if not thousands of transactions per second. There seems to be a few problems there right now, and I'm not really sure how many transactions per second sharding will actually have. It's not going to be all of a sudden the millions or billions of transactions per second that some people are hoping for, but it'll be a significant upgrade. And even several hundred transactions per second will be far more capacity than anyone ever needs right now in terms of cryptocurrency. So that will actually get it to scale and it'll scale even more over time. But that's not until summer 2021. Now, the final phase of this, or before it's actually usable, is the, e, uh, is the virtual machine upgrade. And that'll actually be with the smart contracts. And that's slated for summer 2022. So before Ethereum is actually fully workable, it's actually going to be summer 2022 before you can actually move projects onto it. Now that gives other um, platforms like Cardano and Tezos adequate time to actually catch up and get some projects on. And both of those will scale to at least hundreds, if not thousands of transactions per second by then. Or like really Cardano is going to have hundreds by the summer. Tezos already has 40 right now. And there's layer two scaling solutions, but Ethereum has those two. So there's like, Cardano, Tezos, you know, like all these other, um, all these other main nets that have both smart contracts and scaling ready to go. So uh, to use the Battle of Yorktown, you know, like Battle of Yorktown was a siege, and what a siege is is kind of like a strategic squeezing of the of the besieged town until this town runs out of food or surrenders. And whether or not um, the siege actually succeeds depends on. If you can make the town surrender before a fleet comes out and actually relieves it. Now, when Cornwallis was at Yorktown, he sent letters to Sir Henry Clinton up in New York City. And he basically said, um, he essentially said, you know what, we need relief. If it doesn't come soon, um, you know, we might actually have to surrender it. And that's the second army in North America that has surrendered to the Americans. That would end the war. However, you know, Clinton didn't think it was that serious, so he kept on delaying and delaying and delaying. And so, like, you know how Ethereum is actually going to, uh, you know how Ethereum is going to plan to launch in July of 2022 with its full network? Well, just like Sir Henry Clinton's reinforcements, and Clinton actually wrote this to Cornwallis, that, that uh, the reinforcements might be subject to disappointment because of weather. Now, Ethereum 2.0 has already been delayed several times. It's actually been delayed just as much as Cardano. So essentially, like the Ethereum 2.0 uh, 
uh, launch might be delayed subject to disappointment and there could be many many disappointments so right now like the armies of Cardano, Tezos, Ziliqua and other uh, main nets are actually besieging the Cardano fortress I mean not the Cardano the Ethereum fortress and the Ethereum fleet is somewhere across the world right now across the sea and will that fleet come in, come uh, come on time to actually res relieve the Ethereum fortress and its denizens inside, or will Charles Hodgkinson plant the flag of Cardano over the uh, rotting corpses of Ethereum and uh, proclaim a new Cardano age? So we'll actually have to see. We don't really know. Will it actually come in time? Will it be 2022? Will it be 2023? Will it be 2024? Or will the uh, besieging armies destroy the Ethereum fortress? plant it over the ruins and declare a new mainnet that is dominant over the next age. Find out next time on the next episode of Crypto Z.